Space Marine Sergeant. A Sergeant of Space Marines. You know, the Monopo Space Marine from 1993, when the 40k second edition starter set was released. This was the first Citadel miniature I ever owned, and in this video, I am going to paint one and talk a bit about its history. Let me take you back to 1995, a year we've visited a few times in these videos, but an important year for me. It was the year I first dipped my toes in the Warhammer hobby, and my introduction to it was, in part, by this miniature. At the time, several of my friends had begun their journey into this hobby, and through hearsay, I began to pick up a picture of this exciting pastime. One of my friends agreed to sell me a spare unpainted miniature he had, for the sum of £1.50. Whether he fleeced me or not, it didn't matter. I was excited to own something Warhammer, and the miniature he sold me was this one. Well, not this exact one, but another copy of it. A little while later, I found this miniature available in the 40k starter set and the plastic tactical squad box, to name the most obvious. But in researching this video, I found that my friend probably acquired it from White Dwarf 166, released in October 1996. It came with a free miniature, either a sergeant, or a tactical marine with bolt gun, flamer, or missile launcher. The magazine contains an article by Mike McVeigh, outlining how to assemble and paint the miniature. Now I think about it, I wonder if people cherry-picked the miniature they wanted from the magazine shelf. I know I would be searching for the missile launcher if it was me, and I would have been disappointed with another Bolter Marine, but that's just me. I don't own this guy anymore, and I can't recall what happened to him exactly. I know I painted him. I think it looked a bit like this, but worse. Worse than this, with globs of paint and detail obscured. Never mind. This model itself came in four parts. Torso, bolt pistol arm, backpack, and base. The bolt pistol could be angled somewhat, depending on whether you're a straightforward kind of person, or a fire your weapon in the air kind of person. Now, I already have one of these painted up, a first company veteran from the Ultramines chapter, but I wanted to try something a bit different for this video. Most of my paint jobs tend to lean towards the 90s style, well, to the best of my ability anyway. I am no Will, aka Goblin Green, but we can paint our miniatures however we want. They don't have to be heavy metal wannabes, so I'm going to try something a bit more grimdark this time, whilst also aiming for a simple scheme I could paint in one evening, or maybe two. What I show you here is not a technique I invented, it's an amalgamation of several processes, all borrowed from someone, somewhere, on several of the many painting videos I have watched. And I forget where I have watched these, since there have been so many. Then again, very little is original in painting anyway. Yes, it's all been done before, as some of my buddies on Instagram have proved. They sent me some pictures of what they painted. Old miniatures in a style other than heavy metal. Grimdark, you could say, whether they be space marines, or guard, or chaos. Characters, troops, and vehicles. All have been a big inspiration to me, so if you like their work, check it out on Instagram. I've put their handle in the corner of each photo here. So this is one of those space marine sergeant miniatures. Just like the one I bought off my friend for £1.50 in the schoolyard. It's been stripped of paint and assembled. I've drilled a barrel, cleaned the mould lines, and removed the stump where the banner pole once stood. I know, I could make a new one, but... <sighs> well, maybe next time. For this grim, dark, rough and ready, totally not old, heavy metal style paint job, I started with a matte black prime from Colour Forge. And rather than base coating with brush, I use this sponging tool. 
It's just a piece of kitchen sponge, shoved into some plastic tubing. I dip it into Macrag Blue, and then dab off the excess on my palette. The idea here is to cover most of the armour with this, which will be the darkest shade of blue. And if you miss a spot, it doesn't matter. This part is meant to be done quickly. I smash the paint everywhere, except the deepest recesses. But even if I get paint there, it doesn't matter. The aim is fun, randomness and speed. And the sponge rolls a six with that every time. Just make sure you don't dab too hard and dab the fella off your paint handle. Of course, using a piece of sponge as large as this meant I missed some areas entirely which needed blue paint. So I went in with a smaller brush and stippled it on where I felt it was necessary. The next blue is Flat Blue by Vallejo Model Color, which I mix with the Macrag Blue already on my palette. Again, this is sponged on, but this time aiming for the more upper facing areas. The tops of the fingers, shoulder pads, knee pads and backpacks for example. But even on the flat section of the armour, we are left with a desirable mottled look. And if we're lucky, the paint might even catch on the edges of the armour and begin the highlighting process. And this is our Space Marine Sergeant after two rounds of blue. On my palette here, I am mixing in a little Lotham blue to the sponging mix, using the wood of my brush to save the bristles. I repeat the sponging process again, but covering an even smaller area this time, and being much more intentional about where the sponge lands. It's a lot less jackhammer than the previous goes, aiming to lighten the uppermost areas and establish a sort of rough gradient. And finally, with a dot of white added into the mix, certain edges are picked out to finish the look. I'm not bothered if I overdo this bit. A stippling of flat blue later, or a splash of brown for dirt, or a touch of gunmetal for chipping, will cover any mistake deliciously. Mmm. That's sponging though. Flat brown is our next paint, which I slap on the chain sword with an old small brush. In fact, the pistol holster gets some too, as does the bolt pistol, the chest aquila, and the armor trims. You'll see why later. With gunmetal, I paint some details on the backpack and the vents. On the chain sword, I paint the teeth with this, leaving some brown behind to represent dirt. The magazine and some other parts of the bolt pistol get this too, as does the top and bottom of his frag grenade. And here's our chap now. I've added some brown to his face as well, over the black prime. With some gold paint, wiping much of it off my brush, I overbrush the chest aquila, and then line the edge of his pauldrons with this too. Second edition Ultramarines had a golden yellow accent for second edition, but in later editions they went for a metallic gold instead in the official paint schemes anyway. And I opted for metallic gold too, since it was way quicker to paint. Next, the red gets a go. Using Vallejo Dark Vermilion, which is a bit like Evilson Scarlet, I paint the main body of the chainsword and bolt pistol. This takes a few layers, until I am happy, and it's definitely a more time-consuming part of the process than the sponging, but that's okay, since there isn't a huge area to cover. It will soon be time for some weathering, but before then, I have at it with the decals to ensure they become weathered later, along with the rest of the armour. I wasn't sure about the face, but I opted for carefully dry brushing some dark sand over the brown base, and while this colour was to hand, I painted some lines perpendicular to the edges of any leather parts to give them a cracked look. I suppose this could be skipped if I was truly speed painting but sometimes I get carried away with myself. I'm sure you understand. Then I use a pale but pinky flesh colour to edge highlight the chainsaw and the bolt pistol. I know, I know, it's meant to be fast. Why am I doing such things as edge highlighting? Well, in my defence, I normally do two or three layers of highlighting, so this is a concession for me to do just one. With some thin down army paint of barbarian flesh, I glaze over the face. This way, the brown parts still show through somewhat, 
giving some shading to his face. And what a delicious grimace he has, like a bulldog chewing a wasp. Mmm. Tastes good, brother. And for his hair, I use a charcoal grey all over, followed by a few lines of lighter grey. He's a veteran of several conquests, this one. And one last fiddly detail is to add a touch of green to the frag grenade. I haven't used any washes yet, but I break my streak by applying a little Reichland flesh shade to the parts of the skin, where I wanted more shading, but mainly to the Aquila and any gold sections, just to mute it a little. But now it's time for some weathering, and with another kitchen sponge, I dab on some gun metal. I dab it on here and there, where I wanted the armor to be chipped. And here he is at this stage. Space Marine Sergeant! Tabletop ready, I would say. And I didn't even break a sweat. But I've heard good things about using oil paints to stain your models, and make them a bit grimier. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to practice. I dilute some burnt umber oil paint with white spirits, and paint it liberally across the model, ensuring the recesses on his armor receive a generous volume to emulate the accumulation of dirt and grime and whatnot. Painting this on top of the decals pulls these into the armor in a more natural looking way. Once that's dry, I use some white spirits on another sponge to pull off the excess burnt umber. I know, there are other implements I could have used, such as a Q-tip or floor mop, but as usual, I just use what I have to hand and I encourage you guys to do the same. Experiment, improvise, innovate, and find your own relaxing hobby groove. Don't let cowboys like me dictate your practice. It's your hobby after all, and if you enjoy it, then that's a definite win. I painted the base green, of course. It's not the original goblin green. In fact, it's not particularly close, but it will do. I apply a little PVA to the top of the base, and then sprinkle a pinch of sand from either Fleetwood or Cleveley's in Lancashire. I can't remember, and it's not important. When that's dry, I seal it in place with watered down PVA, and when that is dry, it gets a coat of green again, and a final highlight with Vallejo Dark Sand. And there he is, one retro plastic Space Marine Sergeant, painted with mostly simple and fun techniques, dark and grimy, and not at all like the studio pieces back in the day. It was entertaining to experiment with some techniques I don't normally use. Is there room for improvement? For sure. We're all a work in progress after all. Speaking of progress, at the time of this video's release, we have just crossed the one year anniversary mark for Minescape. One year, and 40 something videos. It's been an enjoyable journey so far, and I have no plans to stop. I want to say a massive thank you for all my subscribers and regular well wishes in the comments section. Your overwhelmingly positive messages really do help motivate me to keep going. So thanks again, and here's to another year of Minescape, and many more to come. Anyway, if you like what I do, then please check out my Instagram as well. And with that, I had better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching. Two, three, four. He's got a bolt pistol in his right hand. He's a space marine sergeant. And revving a chainsaw in his left hand. He's a space marine sergeant. A ten-man squad he has led, far too cool to helmet his head. He's a space marine sergeant. He's got access to a range of war gear. He's a space marine sergeant. Plasma pistols and power fists. He's a space marine sergeant. A monopose model on a slaughter base. For conversions, his arms you must replace. He's a space marine sergeant.